but it worked okay. yesterday. Yeah. No, because I didn't bring this one. Oh, it is not yours. Uh, yeah. Do you have Type C? No. Yeah, Only Thunderbolt. I have the adapter upstairs. Oh, upstairs. Okay. Okay. Right. You want to go? Uh, yes. Um, maybe before I I show this, maybe I would like to ask, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what do you want to know? You know, because I'm I have a few, I have other things. We have credit transfer, or we have like. Um, what do you want to focus? Any issues that you want to you want me to share? Yes. Uh, I think the most important thing is that how can you uh, make all the university accept like uh, in uh, India like that in it cost uh, and then. Uh, what have you done so far from now? Yeah. Accept the the accept the idea of having this credit transfer, or what do you mean accept accepting concept? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I think in Malaysia, uh, because the ministry, the 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 public university is under the Ministry of Education. And also, we are bound. Uh, we work together very close. We are bound to the uh, the Malaysian qualification agencies. So these two bodies, the Ministry of Education and the MQA, we work very closely together. And if uh, if uh, all accreditation, okay, any programs that is offered, that any institution wants to offer a program, they have to get approval from the, this both organization, the Ministry of Education and the MQA. But there are levels uh, of, we need to get the approval from, um, okay. First, there are the five research university. Um, these five research uh, university, they, they are all self-accredited. That means when we want to develop program, we, we will approve it ourselves then you know we we have to do everything uh, go through the, the review come up with the courses but we will have our own accreditation bodies and we inform formally to the ministry of education other universities that is not research universities they have to go through the approval of the malaysian qualification agency including courses that needs to be used for credit transfer in MOOCs, but not the one that is not uh, transferable, like lifelong learning courses or courses that has been approved and you make it into MOOC, that one you don't need approval. But then courses that you need to be used for credit transfer, it has to be to get through this MQ, uh, MQA and the ministry. Once the MQA and the ministry came out with guidelines then, or even policies, then we have to follow. And we have audits. Every now and then we have audits whether or not these universities are following the guidelines. We have uh, also what we call location audits. We get all these people will go to visit the facilities. They claim that they have this and that. We want to see whether you have that and whatever that you have claimed. And we have, I think we have this kind of, of monitoring system, including audits and, and reports from the, um, the, the person in charge of this in the university will be the deputy vice chancellor of academic and internationalization. So this, the, under this Deputy Vice Chancellor of Academics, everything, all the MOOCs and um, Innovation and Teaching and Learning Center, uh, Center of Academic Development will be under this Deputy Vice Chancellor. So he is answerable to the Ministry and the, this uh, MQA. So uh, once the guideline or the policy is imposed, they will have a 
a time, uh, what you call, um, they give you a time, a one year time for you to, to prepare, um, to um, get more people to work on it until it is officially imposed within one year. After that, then they will do this uh, monitoring. So I think we are bound to that, that we have to follow, to comply. Uh -huh. Do you accept the online cost? Do you, uh, your accept. country, accept the online cost of the other country? Okay. Um, for public universities, so far we have not, um, we have not fully done it. I mean, accepting this kind of request yet. But since the guideline has been, has been done, has been developed and, and uh, distributed to all the universities, we, uh, only this year, they are going to implement it. But this is only for public universities. The private universities, they have started to do it, to accept uh, courses that, uh, they, that students took online as a credit transfer. So a little bit different from the private universities. But al also only this year, uh, the, the pub uh, private universities are doing it. But in the guideline, maybe I show you some, the one example. There, there is a process that you have to follow. Um, pitch. Because I have this in PDF. So this is the guideline, the process. I can share with you the, the file I sent to Anisai. <coughs> so um, we don't have to, we don't have that. Like India, they said, oh, no university must refuse because our credit transfer for, for, tra for accepting the courses online, the certification, the validation must go through the university senate. It's not as easy as like, you know, oh, I take this uh, course somewhere and then, you know, you must, you must accept. Because we want to make sure that the students, the validation of the certification, there's so much, e uh, so much of forgery happening and um, we have to uh, validate even uh, assessment, different kind of assessment. There are universities who actually use oral assessment, uh, oral assessment to, valid, to have this, um, what we call the competency assessment for the students who's taking online courses. There are oral assessment, there are um, written assessment also. And sometimes when these students, when they have enrolled, let's say they take, they take courses outside and they enroll into that universities, the university will have to do some on-site assessment also. You come to my university, you want, you bring the certificate, you do this test, then only you can, you can, you can pass. Uh, huh? Same as Thailand. Uh, although they say, oh, we have credit transfer and credit transfer, the name is easy to transfer credit, but the process is not as easy as they thought. Yeah. Although we say that, you know, learning should be happening easily, uh, accessible, seamless, borderless, but we, we do not want to take things for granted. Uh, we want to make sure that the process is uh, validated, uh, fully um, accredited and organized and structured. So the students must go through and the owner of the MOOC is actually the... Um, the organization or the institution that will provide the certificate. Uh, for some uh, universities, when they get the certificate, they need certain stamp also. Uh, 
uh, certain stamp to validate the because we had a case where you know where um, some like forgery where they actually forge forge the certificate with even the stamp. So we would want to prevent that from happen, especially in uh, credit transfer MOOC. Yes, 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 yes. I'm sorry that uh, I have many questions for this. Uh, uh, when you audit university uh, to make sure that uh, their costs, costs are qualified enough, uh, but sometimes it is not, how can you manage? Oh, okay. uh, when the cost is not, as, uh, um, not com uh, doesn't comply with the uh, uh, qualification, we, call, we have to uh, ask them for CQI, um, CQI uh, continuous quality improvement, uh, CQI. We give, we give them time to improve, then come back. Then they, after, after the time given, they have to send us the, the uh, improvement that they made. If not, or if not, they can just stop the course. Uh, they can. They have the, the the agencies have the, the like the uh, MQA. They have the right to stop the course. Uh? Sixty to ninety days. Mm. Yeah, very short time, because uh, usually the one that is not uh, comply is just like uh, very very minor, very minor. For example, like um, they don't have. Uh, certain um, assess assessment that is not, uh, you know, they have very not in depth assessment, uh, those kind of thing. But so far, it's not that um, that major because most of the um, courses that they offered for credit transfer has been approved earlier. It's in the program that has been uh, uh, accredited. The only thing uh, that we are looking it hello, hello. Look, looking into are the courses that are from other countries. Courses from other countries that that they want to use for credit transfer. That's the one that we take a longer time. I mean, we need to get the certification validated to get from the other. One of the way is to have some MOU between the countries the MOU uh, or G2G um, agreement? I, I, I know that uh, sometimes uh -huh. the OC countries, yes. uh, uh, the university, some university and some courses uh, uh, have been uh, accredited by okay. some uh, accredited center okay. of their country. Yes. And do you accept that? Yes, but still um, the uh, it has been accredited to that country. Yes. Um, because uh, those countries, the one that we have MOU, then we will accept. Yeah. Uh, but but sometimes no. Without, no. without MOU, uh -huh. we have to get validation from, from that the... country first. Then only we can accept. Oh, so mm. okay. Validation means we will actually contact the, 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 the country's uh, ministry to ask whether this, this is the certificate, and that certificate, and whether or not this is approved, we get that verification, formal verification, then we'll leave us out. Uh, right now, we uh -huh. heard about a big university in U US, USA, US, okay. like Stanford or uh, MIT. Uh, yes. uh -huh. uh, they are going to provide a lot of courses uh -huh. online, and yes. then they expect to have a, a 10,000 uh, 10, or no, uh -huh. a thousand million students to enroll, Sarah, right? Yes. Uh, and then yeah. <laughs> what will be happen to uh -huh. the university in the world? Uh, I think okay. sometimes we uh -huh. have to think about this. Uh, yes. That, that okay. can we accept that? Okay. Um, that's why uh, in our guidelines, um, for that particular degree, let's say you have 120 credits, that is our minimum degree to graduate. We will fix a number of credit that is allowed that are allowed to be transferred. Fix, let's say, for um, you know, under with 120 credits, you are allowed only 12 credits, for example. Uh, 
It depends on the program. Certain program they have 135 credits. So they will decide how many credits can be used for credit transfer. Mm. I think this is the same as in Thailand. Same. But in the future, uh -huh. uh, our students will go to uh, Stanford and MIT uh -huh. by more course yes. like this. Uh -huh. And they get degree, degree from that yes. university, not okay. in Thailand anymore. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how so, do you... <laughs> So okay. how, how mm. can we manage that? Mm. All university in the, uh, our question. country will be closed down. <laughs> okay. Uh, technology will never replace a great teacher. <laughs> 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 I think your course, the one that existing course, we have to have more innovative and creative people to redesign the program, to redesign the courses, to redesign the learning, the, the syllabus. To design, uh, even in the faculty, you must try to design as, um, courses that are more unique and unusual. For example, if you are from the faculty of uh, language, you're teaching linguistic. Now, why don't you have a program like a double degree, linguistic and Business administration, double degree. Why not? Let's say I'm majoring in, few, uh, uh, I do degree in music, but I want to do some, uh, another degree in, what, what, doctor? Hum, uh, human development, for example. Then I will teach social sciences and humanity uh, subject, and I will teach people with me. So it's actually a different, we want to produce, graduate with different skill sets. That give more benefits. That give more benefits. And give more benefits to the employers also. They don't have to take many people to train many people. One person can do multitasking because they have this talent from the universities. <coughs> For example, let's say, you have to imagine, I'm teaching microbiology. Right? If let's say in, a, an, in an exhibition, I have these two booths, okay? Now, now just imagine, I have these two exhibition. Um, um, it's about uh, technology. And this first booth, this first table, this group of students from the faculty of uh, computer and multimedia, they're showing about augmented reality, virtual reality they show to the visitors, this group of students. This group of students, another one, besides them, beside just the booth is beside them, are my microbiology student. They show the same thing, the same thing as this group of students. Which one is more impressed to the employees, to the employers? Definitely the microbiology student, because not only they work on the science, life sciences, but they have the same skill, same talent as the faculty students from the Faculty of Computer Science. Does this Faculty of Computer Science know anything about microbiology? I don't think so. But this one, this can be, this has different skill set. So these kind, we, we have to put the end at the upper, in the mind when we actually create the, the program. What kind of student that you want to produce? the future ready student, uh, future ready graduates. So question is whether or not courses online can produce the future ready student. So the existing, existing courses program in the faculty, you must get your faculty to sit down and redesign. To, I mean, it's not easy. I can tell you it's not easy. Being a uh, innovative lecturer, educator also is not easy. This is like you wake up four o'clock in the morning just to design, just to think what is, what will be the activities that you're going to have with your students, what project that you're going to get your students to to do so that they have an immersive experience, and how, what kind of assessment that you can use for learning, not off learning assessment for learning and assessment as learning. 
So we are look, we are we want to move away from this lecture based, exam based. We want to get students to study not for exams but study for to learn. We want them to but then. In order for them to do that, we have to pick their curiosity first. When they are curious, then they want to explore. Doesn't matter how they explore, they can Google for, for easily, right? But then when they Google, when they explore, they might find something else. When they find something else, they, we want them to have the habit of sharing with others. Because sharing is the highest digital bloom taxonomy. Bloom Digital Taxonomy. Our Bloom Taxonomy highest is create, right? But in Digital Taxonomy, highest is sharing. Of course, now the students, they love to share. They share everything in their Facebook. They want to go to toilet, also they share, <laughs> right? They share their status and everything. So now, and, and they use their mobile phone at all times. They cannot live with their mobile phone. So, <coughs> Sorry. So our job is to guide them on to how to use the advancements of the technology, the technology, the mobile phone for learning. So assessment can be done in many ways. That's what we call alternative assessment. So don't use assessment of learning, but you use assessment as learning. I mean, I think double major, double degree courses, that one would be, would be more interesting. Yeah, so, <clears throat> thank you. Just want to compliment on uh -huh. your comment and then a, a question. I think uh, MOOCs is a, is a movement that democratizes content but not learning, right? Yes. So, yeah. echoing your comment that yeah. I think um, in the near future, universities will find themselves um, not having to deliver content anymore because it's available anywhere. But the question still remains how to create you know, a capable student. Right, which is not only about content. Yes. So the universities will have to shift themselves from you know teaching into mm -hmm. you know creating a, a learning environment. Yes. Right. So I yes. think that's a yes. that's a good sign. Yeah. So so I guess coming back to the credit transfer uh -huh. um, topic, uh, this is mostly about how to manage the you know the the content yes. uh, delivery uh -huh. part. So I guess my question here is about uh -huh. the uh, process. This process seems uh -huh. a bit um, labor intensive, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Um, for example, I think if I understand this correctly, this mm -hmm. is what happens when each student wants to transfer a credit, yes. right? Uh -huh. So they would have to apply and then um, submit their um, certificate from a MOOC course, yes. and then that will go through this whole yes. um, flow chart. Yes, correct. Um, so it, it's, it seems a bit intensive that mm -hmm. you, know, you have to go through this process every time. Is there yeah. um, any thought on maybe um, changing the person who applies um, that goes through this process from the, uh, the student to the, the MOOC creator? Mm -hmm. So maybe like if you create a MOOC mm -hmm. course, you can apply and go through this process and then get approved. So whoever graduates mm -hmm. from this MOOC course, they would automatically know that they can actually transfer a credit mm -hmm. to, you know, they yeah. would pass this process. Um, actually, this, is, this was done earlier in 2016 with the new, uh, with the old government. <laughs> and with the new government recently, we have, uh, we are doing the midterm review where we are reviewing exactly the process that you mentioned just now, which I cannot show you yet because it's not been approved. But it's much easier than this where the owner of the, uh, as you mentioned just now, the developer of the MOOC will actually will have that uh, authority to give the certificate and validate. And uh, our job is just, um, it's just a one, one uh, two process less than this. Exactly what, as you mentioned just now, which, is, which makes it much easier. Um, yeah, because I think, uh, uh, one benefit is is for a university to take a, a global picture about how to transfer MOOC credits. For example, like um, when someone wants to transfer a credit right now uh -huh. to my university, yes, it has nothing to do with MOOCs, right? Okay, they would have to say, "Oh, I have taken this course uh -huh. at this university, and okay. I want to, you know, 
I want to propose that it is equivalent to this course, yes, yes. right? Uh -huh. And then yeah. we have to open the curriculum and yes, you know, see exactly. if it matches. Exactly. Uh -huh. And often case, uh -huh. we would see that, for example, you know, a course may have content A, B, and C yes. in one university, uh -huh. but A, B, and C is distributed in many courses yes. in another university. Yes, correct. So when you try to map this course uh -huh. to a particular course in another university, it's rejected. Yes, exactly. You know, so you know, it's a it's a often a complex uh, uh -huh. mapping, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you have uh, a process where a MOOC creator uh -huh. can actually apply, uh -huh. maybe there's a chance for um, the MOOC creator to say, okay, this uh -huh. this course can be mapped to you know X, yeah. Y, and Z in yeah. three courses. So if yeah. you take these, we'll cover and encompass. The yeah. Others. So these three three MOOC courses will cover these yes. two courses in your yeah. curriculum yeah. or something like yeah. that, right? Yeah. So that means with one, let's like say three, uh, we call it like three credit uh, MOOC course, can cover the five, five credits course in two courses, the existing courses, something like that. Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe the MOOC creator would see that, oh, they're missing a component. Maybe they can create another MOOC course uh -huh. that would fulfill what's missing, you know, something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, that's right. But still, uh, with that, you know, the. Um, the MOOC creators, they have to work with these other uh, universities also to... When, when you say that, you, you see that... Um, because every time when, uh, as you say, when every time you want to compare so that the courses are aligned with our, um, our existing course to be transferred. And the MOOC creators, they have to do their homework also. Because, okay, we have this... Uh, let's say 12 topics but that cover this course. But this course, if these students want to take, it doesn't cover uh, the whole credit. So they have to do their... If you say they were to, to uh, review or revise their syllabus based on the needs of the uh, applicants, they still have to do some homework also, right? Uh, yeah. So even that, when you have the, the MOOC creator or developer, when they create or develop the MOOC, they have to have their own um, own uh, how to say they have to do some research first also, and to to see whether or not they can accommodate a lot of people, um, and not just simply you know to have that course. But it's good. For example, we can even have like a um, like in in ASEAN countries or or Asian countries, we can even have like a collaborative MOOC. Let's say we take a course, for example, like research methodology. Uh, you know, maybe uh, your university's research methodology, are this, these are the topics and, you know, and ours is like this, we can compare and we can even come up with one MOOC that can be used with all the universities. A collaborative, collaborative MOOC. So in one course, MOOC course, we have many developers from other countries, but we are sharing the same MOOC. That can be done also. Hmm. Or we can also work with other people, like you said, MIT and Stanford. Right, why not? Right? You, to, 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 they can learn from us. Not that every time we learn from them. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, like, like our ASEAN countries, uh -huh. we uh, can make some MOU together MOU, uh -huh. and then we can transfer our credit uh -huh. among our universities and then make uh, the standard high, higher. Yeah, the like that, uh, quality then, of, yes. the, of the MOOC. Of the MOO. Yes. Uh, actually, the um, ACU, uh, ASEAN Cyber University, together with Korea, is working on that working for the to help the uh, to create this what we call the bank cost bank for credit transfer uh, with the uh, also the CLMV the Cambodia Laos uh, Myanmar and Vietnam so but it has been like quite some time huh? the Japanese uh, the ACU it had, um, uh, we had a first meeting only, but it has been. It started in two thousand nine, and it's not been materialized yet. Um, 
I think some constraint uh, also with the some limitations with other. We have to see the facilities and the in and in the infrastructure and infrastructure in certain countries also. But we have to start somewhere. We can start small first, even with one course for to for us to to share, you know, and see how and and see what happens from there. Mm. Um, for example, like uh, there's one um, course. In, in Malaysia from this uh, University Technology Mara, they work together with MIT. Uh, they co-develop a MOOC uh, in food supply chain. The course is food supply chain. So, you know, that is one way to get to, to get, uh, I think it's a good course. Um, but of course, when say, oh, MIT, you know, people will say, oh, it must be a good course. <laughs> okay. But then we can have our, you know, we, we, we can work it's very important for us to work collaboratively, work with other universities, other countries, and work with the industries. Huh? So industries, we can work with, um, depends on your field. I can work together with, maybe for my microbiology, I can work together with people from the biomedical science also. Mm. So, still coming back to, um, you know, the, the process, um, we try to, um, to make it easy for, for everyone, actually. Try to do that. Um, and along the way, uh, we would want to review it, the process. And this time, um, we want to get people from other countries uh, to take our MOOC also. Interna internationalization and visibilities, right? Um, and of course, like India, you have done it like like for how long? The credit transfer. Last year, Last year uh, 2016. Uh, so we, because MOOCs have been like for, for quite some time, so now we are working into uh, credit transfer. But in a way, we are looking into, uh, we, uh, way forward also, we would want to look at uh, micro-credential, for example doesn't have to be uh, like a degree courses it can be like just a certificate certificate course between you know after high school before going to the colleges you may want to have like a certificate just to have that skill can be as simple as do uh, photoshop or you know uh, adopt illustrator to learn different skill set just to equip yourself before you go for uh, your degree that is what we call micro-credential certification. That can be done through MOOCs also. So any universities that want to offer uh, one uh, uh, certificate course, you know, can be used by other universities. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can start from Chiang Mai University. <laughs> I think there are many ways I mean, to, to do this. It's just that we need to have more sharing. I do not know what you're doing in your university. You do not know what, what I'm doing in my universities also. So I think we need to have more sharing. And I think we need a platform also to share. And of course, the, the networking, uh, the network to, to, to have. And uh, I was told that in Thailand, then, uh, you have like 140 universities. Uh, and maybe can even have a uh, different collaborative work uh, to start off. Is there any MOOC that has been developed collaboratively or maybe different faculty in one university? Yes, but not different university? You're going to have. <laughs> You're going to have. Oh, that's good. Uh, collaborative MOOC. Uh. Oh, <laughs> yes, now I was thinking like, even to have like a mobile, uh, you know, to have a course, how to create a mobile app, you know, more simple mobile app that you can learn in, let's say, four weeks, you know, for the student between, uh, you know, the, the high school student, that one also can. Or the universities, people, you, the, the, the universities, they are full of PhDs, right? And how can we make this thing work? We can even be the mentor for our schools, mentor-mentee program, like Dr. 
she plan mention mentor mentee program also so a lot of ways we just have to be more creative and innovative but in order for us to be more creative innovative we ourselves have to explore first so i think the last thing that i can say that you know the there is a quote saying the illiterate of the 21st century are not the one who cannot write and read but those who do not want to learn and learn and relearn thank you Yesterday, actually, we, we have a discussion okay. that uh, there are going to be a set of universities joined together to work on, the to work on one course. Oh, okay. Okay, so um, I think it was said by Ajahn Suchat yesterday that more no, more sure, more call. What would be the course? One on one curriculum. Maybe one, 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 one curriculum. Yeah. The, 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 same curriculum but uh -huh. one university for one course okay so but they have to agree on on the total yes, curriculum yes. yeah okay you see when i had when i had this uh project it's just a project it's not even a course the virtual microbes project that i mentioned that was 700 and 780 students with eight universities what i did was i called the i called the lecturers call and email them saying that oh we are going i want to have this and then uh, would like to invite your students to join some of them rejected me bluntly you know and then they will say did your university ask me ask you to do this no i said no prof oh next time please don't in involve me for the things that i don't know he said like that and then i said i don't need I, in, in my heart in my heart i said i don't need you i need your students only <laughs> but then you see the the, the 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 lecturers they become intimidated for the things that they are not sure or they are not used to because they are afraid of you know to show that they do not know but then it's important as i said we want to become co-learners and co-creators so you see to do uh, to cut it short the the virtual microbes I get the lecturers to agree to work together for one assignment only. For example, for the first year, we have this basic microbiology. So if your university have this course, basic microbiology, your university has, so we gather all the basic microbiology lecturers, discuss, we discuss virtually and come up with one assignment. That assignment with all the learning outcomes, the learning activities, and then the assessment, do it uh, they do it in that group one group will have these people from eight universities that f offer the same course uh, um, basic microbiology and when they discuss they discuss virtually and the video record um, assessment is done in in their own universities assessment is done by their own lecturers only that the process of working uh, the the on the assignment is done together so from first year until the the fourth year there are all this group of assignments one in one group very interestingly we call it a big umbrella the name is biomedical microbiology this group is very unique because we have four courses Students from four students who are taking four courses: uh, pathogenic, immunology, genetics. This is these three courses are taken by the same student from five universities. But there are two other courses that is diagnostic and public health, diagnostic microbiology and public health, that are not offered in any other universities but in one universities. But don't you think like, you know, diagnostic microbiology and public health are very related to the immunology, pathogenic, it's all under biomedical. So what we did was we combined all these students taking all these courses together in one group to work, into with, uh, to work with one assignment, one project. So when, do, when they do this project, those people who are taking immunology, they can work with people who have above, 
who's taking public health courses. But designing the assignment have to be very intense because you want to make sure that the students will be able to relate all the courses. So the process is um, learning together, uh, is actually peer learning also. And not only that, uh, it's also uh, another way of assessing their soft skill. Hmm? Leadership, team spirit, communication, everything is there. I have uh, one question. Uh, can I ask Dr. P Pandey, uh, Pandey uh, that uh, the, do you think the degree of your, the MOOC course, degree of online courses, uh, can be accept the same as uh, again, traditional uh, yes, course? Yes. I know it's a problem, but again, the role of the regulator, I mean, they have issued a government order whether you feel it or not, you have to accept it. I mean, whether the degrees are in an online mode or a distance mode or a regular mode, you have to treat it equivalent. But uh, can they get work after they finish the degree? Can they I get mean, I think, uh, the, the student same. will enroll for that course only, which is in demand. Uh, do you have any uh, statistical? Actually, this regulation came into place in uh, July 2018. The first admission cycle will start in 2019. Okay, so we have to wait and see yes. what will happen. Okay, I have this. Oh, this one different. The mic. <laughs> okay, um, we have this. Um, uh, what we, we just uh, uh, impose what we call the fluid and organic curriculum. Fluid and organic curriculum, meaning that it's very flexible. Uh, one of the universities even offered a course, uh, a program called liberal science. Liberal science, I think it's this I mentioned yesterday like a buffet style. The students, they don't have any majors they freely to take any courses for the first year they just want to try any courses first year but by the time they are in their third or fourth semester they have to decide what will be their major and they can take any courses even in other universities also so but that is actually a program not a course so it's a degree but they call it a um, liberal science so I think in a way that um, to make it like very flexible to have that in a way that uh, and MOOC course or can be embedded in that kind of uh, program also for credit transfer. Um. I think credit transfer may not be a big issue in the future because what I heard is that the company will accept someone who can work and uh, they don't care about the diploma, <laughs> but they care about what that people have some skill and also show them what the courses they took if the student can, took, um, can, can take courses, different kind, and collect their own portfolio and show them what the skill that they have. And when, once they accept and they can work, it's all right. So now I think that uh, what should we do is to do some very good course, quality course, courses, and then uh, distribute that. Whatever who can take, take it. And uh, the UC don't accept, doesn't matter. But we have a good quality. Yes, and uh, I think this is not that easy. Uh, when I listen to uh, both of your experiences, 
I found that it's not that easy to get the course accredited to be accepted. And uh, I think that right now we uh, talk about how to promote lifelong learning and also uh, MOOC and so on. But we don't have any uh, body to accredit it as a national, at the national level. So if we uh, learn from your experiences and try to do our own you know, MOOC as the best that we can, that's the issue more than just transfer credit. If we do it very well, and the university will accept it finally. Okay. Thank you. Don't care. <laughs> okay. I think it's I, I truly agree with that because I think it's very important that you know we have to start somewhere. And when we 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 maybe can do it in silent first. We I mean in silent mean low profile. We don't have to make you know, to, to, to announce everybody, oh, we are doing this, and, and nothing is showed. But then, um, how, how are we going to... to uh, the challenge is to, to the acceptance because of their mindset. Uh, and there are, as I yesterday was discussing, resistance people, right? But we, we just have to, to start. Sometimes you have to have that, that, that you know, that... that uh, that thought of you know just just do it like night. Uh, one of the you, know, you mentioned just now how the students to have that skill in Malaysia we have this what we call e portfolio e portfolio where uh, e portfolio is a portal uh, for students to uh, curate curate all their learning artifacts. Learning artifacts mean what they do from day one until they finish their degree. And that e-portfolio, it, it can be like something like a blog. Okay? And at the end of the, it's not at the end, in the, even in the middle of, the, of their study, it, it is accessible to em, uh, employer, accessible to the industry, to the company. Maybe they want to look at, you know, what, what kind of students for internship, so they can access that portal to 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 look for students, potential students or potential employees. So that e-portfolio, the students will have to um, like a re repository of their learning process, what they do, what kind of project, what are their reflections what are the, uh, the, the output of their assignment. So they put everything there. So, I mean, maybe even if they take any courses or any certificates, they can put in their portfolio. So it's some kind like a online resume. How about in India? You have the same... Uh, Case. In government of India, I have two initiatives. One is National Academic Depository, where you know all the you know degrees or the diplomas awarded by any university need to you know uh, updated in this uh, central repository, so that the employers can verify the credential, right? And second is uh, uh, another initiative that is Digital Locker where you can put all your documents, your transcripts, everything, and only the person who are authorized, they can access. So in time, we are trying to have e-portfolio system to look after this, and I try also to convince them to push the certificate to LinkedIn or any yeah, like job yeah yeah some somewhere that in the world they know that if the the certification can be appeared there, yes. they could track it back. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Actually, it is an academic depository. I mean, different name, but same thing. So we have uh, two more minutes left. Golden time. 
Any last question, please? I know that you have been thinking hard on this. If there is no question, then um, uh, we're going to take a 15-minute break, and uh, we will resume at a quarter to 11. So see you then, Cap. Please uh, join me to thank both of our speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah.